got here? Oh yeah. All right, so the ass ends out of the Jeep. Not too difficult to pull, just a few things you gotta disconnect. Uh, you remember to pull your, disconnect your drive shaft. You have to disconnect your, take your calipers off the brakes, hang them up on the, on the chassis, upper and lower control arms, your emergency brake cable, and your ABS connectors. So a lot of people just tell you, also if you get Rubicon, your locker and solenoid connectors there and uh some people will tell you with abs sensors it's mostly better just to unbolt them and pull them out because you might break a connector well i mean you can do that but uh it's really not difficult <clears throat> what you really need is a pair of needle nose like this and that red tab on this connector would be pushed in all the way flush with this edge so you just get the needle nose on this here, slide it back, and then you depress this black clip, and then kind of just push in and out, pull back, and it should pop loose. Not a big deal. Another thing, obviously, not good to let your calipers dangle by the brake lines. So I just took some bailing wire, tied them up. Nice and easy. One thing, definitely good tip to watch out for. Not all JKs will do this, but I've worked on customers' JKs before, and you disconnect the e-brakes. These cables will retract into the sheath and then you can't get them back out because of the way the mechanism is built on the e-brake itself on the handle. Um, so then if you do that, you got to take apart your whole center console and it's really a pain in the ass to try to unwind it and get it to work right because it's got like a clock spring in it. Uh, but that's what I did this time. I just took some vice grips and uh, put a zip tie around there to help cushion and protect the cable itself and then just clamp down on it to hold them out. Piece of cake. Um... If you're fighting these type of connections, those tabs like that, if you get like a, a brake line tool, 13 millimeter slides right over there. So I just put it over the, like this, and you push it up on there and wiggle it, press it, pull it out. Drive shaft hanging by a bungee cord, nice and out of the way. Everything under here is good to go. So, let's see. Next step, I'm going to be mocking up the truss. And we'll get him fully welded in. And I will keep you all updated. Got the axle all cleaned up for welding. First, it took a uh, 80 grit flat disc to it, take the paint off. But I decided that, uh, actually, I decided to discover that a wire wheel actually works phenomenal. I should have tried that years ago. But, uh, all along the area, I mocked the truss up on here, took a magic marker and just outlined the, where it was gonna go, and climbed up the, climbed up, cleaned up the axle as best I could. Same on both sides. And then I also took that wire wheel and got down on the cup of the axle and axle tube, center section, junction, as clean as I can, because I'm gonna put, uh, I think I'm gonna put four separate beads welding the tubes to the housing um the four quadrants on both sides because i've seen stuff i think it was old uh auto edits i think his jeep out of Mo moab is uh center section decided to go up and his axle tubes wanted to stay where they were so the truss and this is mainly to prevent that that's what it is for me try to keep the jeep alive i'm not too worried about crazy weight going on the jeep or uh rock bouncing or anything like that but definitely like to keep her as false as possible so so another update.
All right, well, I got the raised track bar bracket all welded up. It should turn out pretty nice. Let's take a look at it. So, on the inside, in there, got full penetration from the outside. Ran a bead down side there for good measure. Good and hot. Didn't turn out too bad. So with that bad dude, the only other part you have to do is you need to modify your factory track bar bracket. So don't cut her completely off. But uh, so this bad dude is on here, something like this. So all I did was cut the weld down the side here. And then this piece is on top, bridging the gap like that. So cut the weld and then cut across here, even with the edge of the bracket. And then dress it up. That's all you got to do. Piece of cake. Coming along pretty well. Got the uh, truss fully welded. We'll take a look at that tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm realizing as I'm making this video that I don't have a uh, closure clip. So I'm coming back out here and uh, take a little video. I've had this thing out wheeling up in Gulch's RV Park since I put this on there. Um, everything held up just fine and dandy. Um, believe it or not, I welded this onto the axle using a dual voltage machine um, on 115 VAC. I think it's on a 20 amp breaker. And I welded it with 35 thousandths wire, so .035, at 242 inches per minute and 19 volts. Um, truss went on fine. Most of that, you know, I could weld in whatever position I wanted. Um, kind of same thing with the track bar bracket, but what I did do, because I'm using the 115, I was concerned a little bit about penetration was all the track bar bracket to the axle tubes, I welded vertical uphill. So I know it's supposed to give you a little bit extra penetration. And um, I beat on it pretty good when I was out wheeling it. And no welds are fatiguing, nothing's cracked, and I have no doubt whatsoever that it's going to hold up just fine. So um, that's the finished install. So I guess the proof's in the pudding. She's going to hold up. I have no doubt, and obviously with your track bar, I did the front the same way, what will be coming in a future video, um, vertical uphill to the tubes, and obviously you trust your life with that, because if that comes loose going down the highway around the corner, you're pretty much done, sir, done, so um, I'd do it again. Fun project, so I think it also looks sweet. Uh, I ended up clear coating it, and yeah, I know it's kind of raw. You see where I left some paint there where I hit it with the wire wheel? But I don't mind it at all. It matches the diff cover. And uh, I think it looks kind of cool. It's just something about raw metal that's pretty badass in my opinion. So, One thing I forgot to mention is that uh, this raised track bar bracket, you can't use it in a stock location. You have to have at least 2.5 inches of lift to run this thing. Um, so the bottom hole where the stock bolt was right here, that's just for alignment purposes. Um, you can put a bolt through there if you want to, just for extra hostness, I guess. This holds for 2.5 inches of lift three and a half inches of lift and four and a half inches of lift and above. So what I'm running right now, I'm running three and a half inches of lift in the back. So two and a half of that is springs. So I got one inch Careflex spacers up under there. Don't mind that a uh, clear coat peeling off of there. That was engine enamel paint too, or clear coat by the way, but she didn't want to stick for some reason. So I'll have to fix that later. But anyway, so yeah, three and a half inches of lift in the rear suspension and four and a half inches in the front, two and a half coil and two one inch Terraflex spacers. Um, so that's what I'm running right now. She sits nice and flush and it's good to go. So thanks for watching. See you next time.